first welcome everyone to our webinar. So it's the last webinar before our official release of PIX12. So if you are interested in our uh, PIX12, just uh, come to us to our in next, next weeks in the ASM. ASM. In today's topics, uh, we will talk about many about the PTM and the mutation. So when we talk about the PTM and the mutation in the proteomics area, I think uh, the first, the first, uh, the first thing in my mind is that we know that from genes to protein, or usually from genes, uh, for uh, for the human genes, human only if we, if we count the gene number, it only account around twenty thousand of the gene number. But when we talk about the platform, the number is much larger. The reason for this increment mainly come from either the you have the amnesty level of the variance, you have mutation in the in the sequence, or you will have the PTM here. So mainly in this area, we when we talk about uh, we will always talk about the PTM and uh, mutation in the same time. So before the webinar, I do a search on the PubMed based on the paper number. So you can see that in recent five years. If we, we, we track as the proteomics as the keywords, this is the paper number. And also, if we check with the PTO, PTM or its mutation, then this is also, the, 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 looks like the, the trend is similar. So, and in, in fact, when I research, when I investigate more paper, I found that uh, in, most of case, in most of the case, uh, we, will, we will investigate the PTM and the, PTM, uh, the mutation at the same time, sometimes, we we want to know that if there is a the mutation, well, what will what will it infect the the PTM something like that? So we will have the example to show this case. Okay, so when we talk about the the whatever is the PTM or the confident uh, or the mutation, the first question or the key question is always that how can I say that this is a confident 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 PTM or confident for confident mutation? So from the application views, usually for the user, they will say, okay, this peptide is a confident identification. So, but if, if we start from the mass spectra or from the, from the, uh, from the mass, mass spectra guys, we will say that, okay, this PSM is, is the correct way. So this is the peptide special match is the PSM. We will say that this PSM, PSM is confident. But how can how can we differ, definite or what's the definition of the confident? There are a lot, there are a lot of the paper to talk about this one. Something like in the last year, the one guy one guy published one paper in the science at the month to say, okay, I, I found a new PTM in, in the in the plant, and then in the, in the next year someone say, okay, for this data set, the data data processing maybe have some issues. You cannot differ the. The, the real PTM, or I say this, this is another PTM. And the reason today, we know that for the, if we talk about the mutation, for the HLA peptides or the immune peptides, the mutated peptides or the mutation is more frequent, frequent in, the, in this area. So if I want to make sure this is a confident mutation, I need a more, I need a more, uh, need a more label times so or to manually check to see if this um, this PSM is a confident one. So if we look inside in this, this paper, usually we will have uh, some recommendation for for when we check in the PSM, how can we say this is the right one or this is the confident one? Sometimes we will require, recommend that for the PTM, maybe you can do the open search to make sure the delta mass is the is the PTM. And also for the PTM, things PTM can include two things. One is the, the, the type of the PTM. The other one is the site of the PTM. So for the PTM, usually we want to require a site score to tell, to tell me how confident are, uh, uh, the PTM in this location. And also we need to check the sequence database to make sure something like my sample is the human sample. But to, if you search maybe some virus faster or the E. coli faster, you find some PTM, maybe this is, this is not suitable. So this is the idea from this paper. And also for the HLA peptide, you can say that for in this paper, the, the author used the, his, his, his standard something like, if this is a good, or we can say it's a confident PSM, 
what what requirements are required for the for the for the PSM or for the match? The first thing that you will check the number of the fragment ions, and for each ions, check the single node noise to see okay this peak is a real peak, it's not, not a noise, and then the uh, completeness of the ions, something like. If I only found a B ion or I only found a Y ion, I don't think I will not think this is this is a very common match. But if we find both B and Y, then we, well, I'm confident that okay, this is a confident match. So this is the basic idea for for us when we check in the PSM. How can I say this is a confident PSM? So go back to the peaks. So in the peaks, we we start from the, we always start from the one idea that for the ion we call the support ions. If there is a PSM or there is a peptide, do you have enough support ions to support your conclusion to for this spectra the sequence here? So for the support ions, we all, peaks also have some requirements for these support ions. So the usually the first one will say that. If you find the continuous support ions for one sequence, something like now the sequence, I have A, B, C sequence, then I find the B1, B2, B3 in a row, or I will say, okay, okay, this is a good match since the signal are continuous. I will say this is a good one. So for this one, in peaks, usually we call we call the it's the we call the it's the tag lines. So when we want to find the constant mutate uh, constant PTM. We will use these parameters as as one of our one of our standard. We have the minimum last number requirements, and then is the ion intensity. So this ion intensity, you can for those for those who are familiar with the MS spectra, you can just think this is the signal to noise. So we can say that for one peak, if it's signal to noise larger than two percent or four, or three percent, we will think that this peak is a real peak. Is not a noisy peak, so we will have, have the ion intensity, uh, ion intensity to filter the spectra, and then based on these two, we want to compare the similarity. So you know that uh, when peaks introduced the DI analyze, we have our our own uh, deep learning model to predict the spectra. So now, assume I have a sequence. I can predict the MS2 spectra. Then I can compare the the, the measured the, the the experiment spectra to the predict spectra and compare the similarity to see how similar uh, how similar is, is my is, is my experiment spectra to the uh, predict spectra. So all these three parts is based on the spectral view, something like. We just check the spectra to see if this spectra are a good one or a good match. And then since we have, we have a deep learning model or we have the we also call it as AI driven model, we can predict other metrics orthogonal to the to the spectra. So for the for the LC mass, we can predict the fifteen times the RT. If it's the I mobility mass spectra, we can predict the CCS. So we can combine all these one. We'll combine the spectra, ions, RT, and CCS to do the risk score to increase our our sensitivity. So after this risk score, we can get more results. The sensitivity is improvement. The other one is that all this part is is merged in the workflow. So you don't need to check the check special one by one. We we just let the, the software finish all the things. So it, it's more cost effective, it's reduced the label time. Okay, then we just will introduce the, the new PIX DB workflow in the PIX 11. So for this icon, for this, those, those who are familiar with the PIX, so uh, looks, it's the, basically it's just the same. So the icon is the same. And for the workflow, it's also the same. The first, the, the first step is always the data loading. Since we are vendor natural, so we support most of the vendor data. And then after data loading, we will do our our our, our de novo to get to get the de novo tag to speed up our search speed and reduce the search space. Then we will do our database. So after the database search finish, usually we will, we will get the candidate peptides. 
capitalist we have to say okay how many capitalists i can find this in this data and then we just based on these candidates to do a do a further validation the first part is the ptm we want to we want to know how many confident ptm i can find in this data in this data set or in these capital candidates so for this step is the confident ptm we already implement in the pix11 and now in the pix12 in the new pix12 we implement or we also use this idea in the mutation so now we have, we have one step called confident mutation so in this in, the, in these steps we can help to uh, we can help the user to find the confident mutation uh, mutation the peptides and finally we add the qc to all of our workflow so after we the, the data analysis finished we can use the qc metrics we pick up or we use the, to see or to to trace if if the data for this data set if all the data can pass our qc standard so this is the basic workflow and then we can talk about some some metrics or some quality quality related metrics to how to help us to say how the, the PSM is confident. So the first thing that I think uh, the, the the one the first one is that the MS2 correlation. So assume now assume in the in our result page assume one sequence you will have a mirror plot here. You can also shift between between the mirror plot and the our classical unmatched unmatched map to to see the to to see the result. So in the mirror plot, in the top one, you have the DB search result as the as, as you are measure the measure the spectra, and in the bottom you will have the predict spectra. So in this mirror plot, it's very 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 easy for the user to see how similarity the two spectra. So we use use uh, use this similarity we, we can. We have our uh, matrix here. We call it the MS two correlation. It's, so based on this value, we can know we can know that how similar is how uh, how similar the two special is. So the, this score is is higher. Then we can we can say that, okay the confidence is usually the confidence is higher. So this is the first metric, uh, the first quality matrix. Then. The second one is that uh, it, it, uh, we, we know that uh, we can predict the RT and the CCS. So for this data set, since it's the OB12 data, so they don't, they don't have the CCS column. If it's the teams, if it's the, if the teams data, then you will have an additional additional CCS column and then the data CCS column. So in here we have two column. Besides the RT, that's that's the that's the reflection time you uh, we got from the raw data. And we have an additional column here, the delta RT. So the delta RT is just to compare the predict RT to the measured RT. So if the, the value is, the value is small, we can see that okay, okay, then this this PTM is is also a confident uh, confidence match since it's delta it's delta RT is in my accept, acceptance range. Okay, and then we have a, 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 another column is called the CA column. So CA means the confident, the confident amino acid. So this ratio is the confident amino acid the ratio in one peptide. So how do we calculate this value? So assume one peptide we have the we have the amino acid. So in each amino acid, we will check if this amino acid is, is itself is confident. So how can we say that this amino acid is confident? So we, we count we count the ions intensity here. So for this standard, for this standard of for, for this cutoff, the value is in our search parameters. So when we submit a DB search, you uh, in the in the report filter, you will have a column here as the CA threshold. So that means for one or for one peak or for one amino for all for one amino acid. We will require that it, uh, when he had uh, for this for this amino acid, it 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 has it has the support ions, and then for the this support ions, the ion intensity much the the ion intensity must be larger than two percent. So this is the cutoff value here. So we take this peptide as the example. So for this peptide, we we have the amino acid, and for each amino acid, we 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 summarize the. Uh, Ion intensity. So we know that for this peptide, 
all all the ammonized data are supported ion ions intensity larger than two. So we can say that okay, for each ammonized data, they are confident. So then finally we will cost the CA ratio is one hundred percent. So this is the how we how we calcul uh, calculate the CA ratio. And then for the color schema here, we uh, we have user defined the color schema something like if the confidence always is higher here, then the color is red. If it's lower, something like, uh, then it's the pink. So use this color schema will tell the user how confident for this amino acid. So that's why we call now we are amino acid level of confidence towards the next level. The next level of confidence is. Now we put the confidence index in each peptide. Uh, in before, this concept is only in our, our uh, deep neural peptide workflow. So now in the new PIX12, we, we extend this, this idea and uh, this columns to all to, the, to our PIXDB search workflow. So now in the PIXDB search, in the in peptide table, you can also find this, this additional, additional columns. Okay, this is the CAA. And then the final thing that we have so many quality related metrics, then we can we can do the race ball. So in during the search, we have options that will cause the deep learning booster. So if you check that box, this column, the minus 10 log P column, in fact is the is the score after we do the race boring. So during the risk rolling, we will use something, some, some, uh, some quality related measures, something like the delta T coloration and, uh, and other features to do to do the to do the risk ball to try to find more peptides. So this is this is the column here. So if if during the search you, you do not check the deep learning boost, then this minus ten log P is still the same as before. Yes, the statistics for if you check the different booster, then if the score is, is out of risk scoring. Okay, then we can, we can talk about our workflow and our, and our result note or the, the, layout, the, the page layout. So, so that one for in previous, in previous slide, we showed that how can we say that the, the PSM itself is the confident. And now we talk about how we can, how we say that the PTM and the mutation is, is confident. So basically, the idea is the same as the PSM, but for the PSM, uh, for the PTM and the mutation, there are some ad 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 additional requirements. So, the, so for the support ion, it's the same. If we say this PTM or this mutation is confident, we, sh we, we should have the ion intensity filter. Make sure this peak, which we believe that this peak is a real peak, is not the noisy. And then for the support ions, we have the idea of the tag lens, especially for the PTM. This tag must cover the PTM site, something like I have a perfect sequence is A, B, C, and the sequence and the PTM is assume the PTM is in the B. So we require that the tag must cover B, something like I found the tag from A, B, C, or from the B, C, D. It must be covered this one. So this is the tag lens, tag, uh, tag lens we used in our backend. The user can adjust these parameters based on their experiment. So for this one, it's for the PTM only. And also for the PTM, we have the A score. It's, the, it's, the, it's some kind of the localization score. So this score will tell us that for this position, what's the probability that this position have this PTM? So of course, this one is only for the PTM only. And also we have the mirror plot. So compared with, with the, our peptide DB search result page, in here, in the PTM or in the, uh, in the mutation, mutation page, the mirror plot is not the measured one, with, uh, measured one compared with the predict one. It's just the, the modified compared with the unmodified or with mutated compared with the wild, uh, wild type. Since in, in, the, uh, in this application, we are more interested in is not how something like not what well, our interest in not, not, not how similarity between the predict and the measured, but we are more interested in that if uh, there is a new PTM here, what 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 uh, what will happen? Something like uh, especially we want to check if the spectral change and also if the delta RT have some change. 
So for the PIX PTM, we have already have that in the PIX, uh, PIX 11. So for the PTM part, this is, this is the same. And now in the PIX 12, we will we add some new, some new result node in, in our workflow. So for the workflow itself, it's the same. We have we have shown it before. We have several steps here. And in the result node, if we check here, it's still the same. It's still our peak, peak tradition. So each result node map to the each steps. So we have a deep node, deep node result here. We have the DB result. Then we have the PTM result. We also have the spider result. And if you run a QC, you will have a QC result node here. And finally, you will have the exporting result node. This is the same, but what is the difference? So in the PTM step, you besides the, the PTM table, you will, you will get a new table called the, the modified PTM table, a, P, a capitalized table. This is the same as in the PIX11 now. And then in the PIX12, we add a new, new table here, after the after the modified peptide table, we add a new table we call the mutated peptide table. So this peptide table will list all the mutated peptides. Then we can start from a simple, a very simple example to show our our new workflow. So the data set is from the, this paper, but also use the PIX uh, to to investigate two very close PTM phosphorylation and sufficient. So at the first, we did, uh, they synthetic some peptides. So we know the peptide sequence, we know the PTM type and the PTM population. And also we know that in this, the, the, the author synthetic some mutated peptides here. And we also know the mutation position, what mutation happened in this sequence. So it's a, it's a, it's a very simple, simple sample there. We can test our workflow. So you want to know that if our workflow can find the company the PTM and the company the mutation. So this, this is the basic search parameters we use in, in this workflow. So the workflow basically is the same. You have the if you have the error tolerance setting here and the enzyme setting here, the PTM setting here, the database setting here. And here in the in here we have the we have a we have a checkbox here we mentioned before, it's a deep learning booster. If you check here, then you do, your result is, is the risk order. We'll, we'll have an additional, additional step, a step to do the risk scoring. And in the PTM, it's the same as the PIX11. You, you, you can find the, you check this box, you can do the PIX PTM, uh, PTM search. If you want to find the signature ion or someone calls the di diagnostic ions, you just, just check this box. And also for the spider here is the same, it's just a check spider. Then the mutated peptides will uh, peptide table will be generated automatically. Okay, then this is some steps here. And then for the result node, for the result, we can see it we can see that in this result node, basically it's the same. You have the different nodes here. You have the summary at first, you will have the summary page to tell you some statistics information, so how many peptides you find, how many P PTMs you find. And then you have the protein page and the peptide page, this is the same. Then, then below, below the peptide page, we will have the modified peptide page if the, if, if the PTM search is, is, is checked. And in this page, the peptides are paired by the PTM. By the PTM. And then, if the spider the spider search is checked, there there will be additional tables here. We call it the modified peptide modified peptide table. So in this in, the, in this table, the peptides are paired by the mutation. And after the after these two, it is still the same. We have the de novo only tab here and the feature tab here. So this is this is the completed completely result node in our new peak throughout. Then we check just the check to the check to new uh, the result page to see what's the difference before the uh, between the PTM and the, the mutated peptide table. So the first thing that in this in this in these two tables the sequence are usually appear. If we found the PTM one, we find the unmutated one. So they are paired, 
and the, the, PTM, the PTM are labeled by the color. So if we think this is, this is the confident one, it's labeled by the green here. If it's not confident, it's, it's, it's labeled by the red. And also this is, this is what we mentioned before. In this, in this page, the mirror plot, the, the, the top one is the, the modified one. The bottom, the, in the bottom is the unmodified one. So we for, take this peptide example, we can see clearly. So from if we check from the YN here, we can find that all the YN are shift. So the, the shift is the, the, just the phosphorylation. We can say from the Y8 to Y5, they are shaped, but from start from the Y4, they are not they, they are not shaped. They are, and they are the same. Then we, we can we can we can say that this shows that the modification is from one, two, three, four here. The the, the modification should, should, we should find the the position should be here. So this is the mirror plot. So that's why we want to use this mirror plot to clearly to show the mass shift. Help the user to, to make sure to confirm where is the location, where is the location of the PTM. And then here I just it's the same. We have the iron cable, we have the, the, uh, the survey scan. And also in the peptide table here, we have a we have a, a, a colon, it's not the delta RT, it's, it's called the RT shift. It's the it's the RT shift between the modified and unmodified one. So sometimes we, we are interested in that if if one PTM can change the Change the lose time of one peptide, so you can find this in this corner very easy, very easily. And also in the in this peptide result result uh, filter, we have a we have a column here. It's a check box is a check box here. As if you check the box, then any pep uh, the only the peptides has at least one confident the PT, uh, confident PTM will be remain in this, in, the, in this table. So this is this is. This is this is the uh, the the use of uh, the usage of this checkbox. So we use apply the same idea to the mutated peptides. So the first the peptides are also paired, but in this time they are paired by the mutation, and also the same the mirror plot we compare the mutated one to the wild wild type one here. The the arm table is the same. And also here the RT shift. Is the mutated the RT shift between the mutated one and the wild wild type, and the, the same is here. We have the confident mutation check box. If check if check this box, so all the mutation must be confident in one peptide in one peptide. Okay, so that that's the basic result. Then I will just summary the result so you can see that. This is the peptide sequence we uh, offered by the paper. We know for this sequence, we know the PTM and we know the, the mutation in each position. We, the first, we search it in the peaks PTM, okay? We usually, we can find them. And then we, we search it with the peaks PTM, with the common PTM. We can find most, of, in most cases, we can find, we can find the common PTM. So for these two, just because the data set contains a lot of the fraction. I just pick up one fraction to do the test. So in the the logic that I pick up, the, so only have uh, only have this uh, this this PTMs here. And for those the six PTMs say it's not a common PTM. We I check the result manual uh, manually. So usually something like why the P, the six PTM say this PTM is not the common? Just because in this fraction there are no enough support ions. And also something like this one. For this one, just because the ACE is wrong. So the same idea is for the for the mutation here. We know the mutation here. And the peak spider can find the mutation. And if I use the confident spider, uh, confident, confident result uh, spider result filter, I can I can make sure this position or this mutation is confident. So this is a, a simple idea or the simple example for the confident PTM. Then we can see a more complicated example. It's from the it's from the paper in the Nature in, the, uh, in last in last year. So long story short, we can we can assume that now okay, I found a new PTM or I have a, a, a found a proposed P, a PTM. So. Well, and I have the LC mass data, so I want to know that 
for based on the LCMS data. First question, can I, can I confirm that the PTM is exist? And for this PTM, is it a confident PTM? And if it's, it's confident, then how what, what was its location? And then for the second question, is more about the biological biological story, something like, okay, if if I assume that this PTM is confident and I know the I know the location, then for this location, I can do the point mutation to remove or ch change this this PTM. Now change this this this, this uh, amino acid. So after changing after changing the position after changing this uh, amino acid. Well, the related PTM change, something else. we can know that if this mutation is related to this PTM. So this is the basic idea of this paper. So then we just uh, process the data. Also, the, at the same, we just pick up some part of the data to do the to do the test. So the first question is that okay, now in for this sequence for this position, do do, uh, do we think this is a confident PTM? If we check the check the PSM the 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 sequence here we can find that although the report the, in the report they tell me that okay there is a there is a PTM here we find the ADP modification here but we will find that since there are no fragment ion in, the, in this area so sometimes it's hard to hard to say or hard to, to, to decide this is a confident one so for this same situation we can say that we can let, 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 let us check how the paper say that. The paper also have the paper also have this situation something like oh, we, in here there are two uh, potential positions here but we don't since there are no frame lines here so it's hard to to say so we can say that also that it's the same the paper say that I cannot I cannot say this the which where is the position so the, so this is I think this is very common for in, in some in some cases especially this for this PTM. The, the ADP the the ADPR the ADPR the mass is very large so sometimes when you need to fine tune your mass spectral experiment experiment parameters to get to get enough fragment ions to support this PTM then we we'll find a we we'll find we we'll find another example also reported in the paper so for this short peptides here. You can find half. Or you can you can find the fragment ion in the in the right of the of the position, but not in, not in the left. So in this case, how uh, how can we decide it? So in the paper, some, something like we can see uh, we can assume that this this is the, uh, this is the position. Since if we say this is the ADPR, it will not be in the G or it will be not in the V. Only uh, in this in this in this part, only only I is the, is the is the uh, is the position so based on uh, based on other experiments the paper say that okay the PTM location is here and then after we after we we confirm that the PTM and the position the other thing is that the, in the paper the also you the the you the also generate the mutated peptide sequence for so here they change the sequence the change the amino acid here and to see after I change it, how can I, how can I, well, uh, well, this impact the, the PTM profiling? So we we'll do the same thing. So uh, we we pick up the we pick up part of the data set. We compare the and do the data pro process. So, so the first thing the first thing is that we want to make sure we can find the mutation. So it's good. So. The paper reported two mutation, uh, two mutation, and in our confident, confident, uh, confident mutation peptide result, if I use the filter, we can, we can find these two confident, uh, these two confident mutation, and I can I can find find the find the fragment ions. And then the next step is how can I do, do the quantification? So by now. We uh, we we support the we will have the function we call the PTM profiling. So in in the protein page, we uh, for each site we will give you the the peak area for each modification compared to the uh, compared to the unmodified one. So maybe just because I didn't pick up the the, the right right part of the data, so 
in here I did, did, didn't get the, the similar result in the paper, but the, the idea is the same. We have the PTM profiling to tell you for, tell for each site what's, what's the change across all the samples. So in the paper, in fact, it just report, reported report the, same, the similar things to, to, to support his story to how this PTM can impact, uh, how, how this mutation can impact, can impact the PTM. Okay. Then we, just, we can just go through some uh, the, the software page to see, to have a general idea. And go here. Okay, so we just checked the studio first. So for the studio, just like we said, it's the same. We have the summary page. This is the we have the the summary page to tell do some tell some st uh, statistics. We have some table. We have some figure here. And also, if you search the PTM, you want you try, you try to find the signature. Uh, of the, the, yeah, no signature here. And we have the have the protein page. So for each protein, we have the PTM profiling function here. You can click here. To get to get the quantification result across each PTM site, and we have the peptide page, modified peptide page, and the mutated peptide page here. This is the basic idea, and then we can go to the online team. Online page open here is more more easier. So you can see this is this is the same uh, the same. Uh, for the sec for the second uh, case, I uh, I uh, I introduced the uh, I introduced, introduced the, so in here is this is is the same. We have I have the summary page here, and since in that case I I checked the signature ions, so it it will show me some potential signature ions for this PTM. So I, since this this PTM is well well researched, so we know that this is correct. This there are some signature ions, so this, these ions are from the DSPTM. And then it's the same, we have the protein page. For each protein page, we have the PTM profiling here. We can, we can, we can check all, all the PT, PTM site. And then we have the peptides, um, modified, modified peptide page here. So here are the example I showed, I showed in the slides. Uh, for this one, the, our software think it's not it's not a confident, confident PTM just because there are no frame ions here. There are no, they are just just the mass we can we can match the uh, the mass, but not the frame ions here. And also for the for the mutation here here the same. We we uh, we, uh, we can see here the so the, since the frame ions is co is cover this part so. We think this, this is the this is the conflict, conflict limitations. Oh. Okay, then uh, okay, this is the um, uh, okay, this is the general uh, this is the just uh, general go through of all the software. Okay, and then we just go back to the to the slides. So before we well, uh, ending, I have some in interest case from our PIX user. It's also related to something like uh, called conf uh, confident identification. So, so for some of our users, they are working in the museum. Uh, in, the, in the museum, so for some old, uh, very old sample, they want to want to find maybe what's the species on uh, on that on that. So they use the peaks something like they work for a very long peptide sequence here to make sure this peptide the the peptide which the through and through the peptides to do the species identification. And also some of our users, they just researched some letters from the Count Dracula to say if, they, if his story is true, then they, they also use the pigs, uh, pigs and use the pig de novo to find some inter interesting peptides to support their stories. Okay, so that's all for the to, uh, today today's webinar. So uh, the same, if you want to know more about the PIX12, so I will, since in the next week in the ASMS, we will, 
we, uh, we, we, we can find more new things about our P12. So if you are interested, just come to our user meeting.